Hi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the nice introduction. This is Juan from SayTech Works, Porto Alegre, Brazil. I'm very glad to be here presenting at the MOSS AK 2020. Thank you for the opportunity to present my research work at this renowned workshop. And also a special thanks to Mr. Valdeck for the organization. I'm going to present my work entitled Statistical Analysis of MOSFET Structured Parameters for NMOS Mismatch Modeling. This is the outline of my talk. First, I will introduce MOSFET Mismatch Modeling. Then I will present my test structure approach following by the visualization of the raw variability data and a statistical transistor parameter distribution. At the end, I will finish with a discussion on the effective mismatch area and a conclusion. Process variability can be divided into two major groups, global process variations and local process variations. Global variations are defined at differences from lot to lot, wafer to wafer, or, dart, or die to die. Their main characteristics are systematic behavior, independent on device size, and somehow controllable. On the other hand, local process variations are defined at the mismatches between equally designed in a close proximity of same kind devices. Its main features are random behavior, dependent on device size, and sometimes uncontrollable. The primary sources of local variations in bulk CMOS are the random dopamine fluctuations and the line edge roughness. The most famous mismatch model for bulk MOSFET is the Pelgrim model published in 1989 by Professor Marcel Pelgrim. His analysis is based on the two-dimensional Fourier transform in which the power content of the fluctuations of a general mismatch parameter delta P it is modeled by its variance. This is shown here by this beautiful integral. The variance of the mismatch parameter delta P is then found by this formula, which models the variance mismatch by a device size term here and a device distance term. Here, AP and SP are the area and distance proportionality constants. The effect of mismatch due to distance is not considerable for closed devices. Hence, given that the threshold voltage and the current factor are the main sources of variations, the general formula for the standard deviation of those parameters are described by this one over square area trend with the slopes named as AVT and A beta. Here I put the curves of Mr. Lakshmi Kumar since he has already seen this one over square area behavior back in 1986. The general MOSFET current mismatch model for all regions of operation it is shown by this equation. It should be pointed that the threshold voltage variance is multiplied by the one GM over ID term. Here in Brazil, we also have our transistor mismatch model based on the ACM model approach. ACM named as the Advanced Compact Model. Just a little secret, ACM means Ana, Carlos and Marcio, which are the author's name of the first paper. Do you know any similar story? So it is a inversion charge based MOS transistor model based on the inversion charge densities of the two ends, source and drain. It relies, it relies on the linear dependence between the inversion charge density and the surface potential. Its single equation models, model is valid for all regions of operation from weak, moderate to strong inversion. The mismatch model was one of the first models to consider the influence of the vertical profile of dopant fluctuations in the depletion region by the NOI factor. The equation model in terms of inversion charge densities is shown here. And the mismatch model expressed in terms of normalized forward and reverse currents is shown here. Here I introduce my test structure used to measure transistor mismatches. It is an SRAM-like addressing style approach. That means in order to access a transistor within a MOSFET matrix, I use switches that are driven by, a, by two X and Y address decoders. The X decoder is used to select a whole drain column, leaving the other unselected drains open. 
On the other hand, a wider color is used to select the gates and the source rows. The unselected source terminals are left open. And in the case of the non-selected gates, a negative voltage is applied in order to turn off the devices. The example shown in this figure is a 3 per 2 matrix where only M2 here is selected. It should be pointed that the test structure features a Kelvin force sense approach in order to overcome not only the IR drops, but also the on resistance of the switches. Here is an example of how the Kelvin approach works. In order to maintain a constant VDS internally on each device, the sense terminal needs to be close as possible to the device under test. Here my R represents not only the IR drop from the metal routing, but also the on resistance of each selection switch. Therefore, as we can see in this figure, the force terminals for drain and source named as VDF and VSF need to reach higher external voltage in order to guarantee an internal VDS value. That means if I want a value of constant VDS of 13 millivolts internally, I will need approximately 40 millivolts applied to the force terminal of the structure. This is the silico implementation of my MOSFET matrix test structure. It implements an array of 40A by 40A addresses comprising of 2,304 devices. These are subdivided into nine groups of 256 of same size MOSFETs. This is the micrograph, and here in the middle, I show a full view of the devices and their final layout. This figure here on the right is the top level implementation of my circuit. It was implemented with two address decoders of 6 word to 64 addresses. In this table, I show the, six, the nine sizes implemented. Note that the same symbol here shows the devices with the same 1 over square area term. And in, the, in this other column, I show the transistor with the same W over L aspect ratio. This slide shows where the silicon measurements were made. It is actually a self-propaganda slide. I imagine you think Brazil as the country of soccer, uh, beautiful beaches and samba. But in fact, I present to you my workplace in Porto Alegre. I work at uh, SATEC as a probe device engineer. SATEC is a state-owned semiconductor fab and design center. The clean room, it's a, it has about 2,000 meter square CMOS factory. And uh, this photo shows my workplace inside the clean room, which is a class 10,000. As you can see, I have a Wentworth semi-automatic probe station. Here it's the B1500 parameter analyzer. And also here it's a key side vector analyzer. Here, down below, it's the Keithley S530 parametric tester. And we also use uh, the Agilent IC cap for parameter extraction and device modeling. Back there, you can see uh, an old FAY FIP, which is still working. And uh, just to let you know that uh, uh, the circuit shown in this work has been measured with the B1500. So let's take a look at the drain current measurement data. Here in this figure, I show the percentage error in the current of, of all curves of IDVG at VDS 100 millivolt. As you can see here, there is a giant variation at weak inversion of almost minus 100% to plus 500%. So here, exactly at this point of VG of 300 millivolts, that I will analyze the distribution of my data. As you can see here in this figure, the error of my 2,304 devices is centered in zero, with high outliers in the positive side. Therefore, uh, trying to find out which distribution would fit into my data, I realize 
that the distribution called T student is the one that follows the data with the high outliers. This is shown by the probability plot figure here, which the red line denotates the T student curve. And also through the histogram, where you can see that the T scale histogram fit line has almost the same shape as the frequency distribution data. So here we have the classical curves of ID variance versus gate voltage, which uh, comprises the general model shown in this equation. These two curves here are for the smallest, smallest and the biggest transistors of the MOSFET matrix, so the highest and the lowest value. And these other three graphics shows the comparison, a comparison of the curves of transistors with the same one over square area term. So there is a huge difference here and it should be pointed that these differences are not predicted by this general mismatch model. So it's clear that there is a secondary device size effect which is not modeled. Going into parameter structure analysis, first of all I have to show the six curves that I used to extract all the target parameters. So uh, ID versus VG, GM versus VG, GM over ID versus VG, second derivative of ID versus VG, Y function versus VG, and the slope factor eta versus VG. The raw data is presented here because uh, it will lead to some parameter errors in the extraction procedure. This is the case of the second derivative, the GM over ID, and the slope factor curves. It is fair to say that parameters dependent on too many derivatives or the ones that relies on weak conversion regime will not be statistically reliable. Here I show the structured parameters with the five methods used. I'm not going to explain each method. The reference paper, it is shown down here. Threshold voltage have been extracted with the transconductance to current ratio, the second derivative, the linear extrapolation, and the Y function method. The specific current is extracted with the GM over ID method. The current gain beta is extracted with the linear extrapolation method and with the Y function method. And finally, the slope factor is extracted by the GM of ID and by the sub threshold slope definition. The beta parameter have been extracted by these two methods and have shown different statistical behavior, as demonstrated in the normalized beta graph and also in the one of the square root area graph. The value extracted with the Y function method presented a wider variation compared to the linear extrapolation method. This is mainly due to the fact that the Y function method get rid of the source drain series resistance. It should be pointed the high linearity term R square of the data presented in the one of the square root area graph. Both methods shows a normally distributed behavior as shown in this normal plot. The slope factor has shown similar results from both methods. It's normally distributed and it has dependency with L and W as shown in this figure graph. The 1 over square root of the error graph shows a very poor linearity since the coefficient of linearity term R2 is very low. It also demonstrates a high offset of the curve since the y-axis crossing term is pretty high. This is mainly due to the fact that the slope factor is extracted in a weak inversion. And at is was shown before, it is not a reliable value due to the limitations in the test structure. This is one of the most important slides of my presentation. As we can see, the threshold voltage is also very dependent on the extraction method. 
the y function represented here by vth4 shows the highest absolute value as shown here in this graph in the meantime it shows the lowest slope of the one of the square root area curve as shown by this yellow curve here the values from the second derivative name it as vth2 are not reliable as presented before as you can see here in this graph they assume a discrete form since it always take the peak value of a very noisy curve the gm over ad method represented by the vth1 also shows a little noise in their values as we can see here in the raw data therefore as a result the best choice for evaluating the threshold voltage mismatch is the linear extrapolation method here represented by VTH3. It, it demonstrates a good linearity and a low offset as shown here by the one of the square root area curve, VTH3. Hence, this value is used for the following analysis. Well, this is a topic that have been discussed with uh, Professor Pelgrim itself in a long list of emails exchanged with him. In this figure, it is plot the sigma delta VT versus the W over L of the transistors grouped by transistor having the same one of a square root area value. So what we have here, it's uh, as predicted uh, by Pelgrim model, these curves should be theoretically flat, mean, no slopes. And it has been concluded that the AVT term has a dependence on the L and W as shown in this figure right here. So uh, this is a research open question because there is no model that can predict this behavior. So I have here listed three hypotheses regarding this issue. One, are these differences due to mask size versus effective channel size on the devices? Or two, are these differences due to the influence of short channel effects on the sigma delta VT? And three, are these differences due to the combination of item one or item two? Hence, in a way of answering, answering the hypothesis one, the following analysis have been performed. In a quest of finding the effective mismatch area as discussed before, I have researched for a method that can extract the effective channel length in an easy and reliable way. For this 0.18 micron technology, the shift and ratio method presented good results for the extraction of the statistical behavior of the effective channel length parameter. The method is based on the ratio of the derivative of the output resistance of a long and a shifted curve of, of a short transistor. It compensates the threshold voltage difference of the short and the long transistors. So it allows to analyze the VG extraction range and the dependence of delta VT versus delta L. This work have been, has been published at the IEEE Transactions on Electron Devices Special Issue on the European Solid State Circuits and Devices Conference 2020. I want to thank the reviewers that might be watching this presentation. To the ones that are not familiar with the shift and ratio method, this is how the method work in a graphical view. My long and short transistor are L25 times difference, as shown in this table. If there is no shift in the curve of the short transistor, we get wrong values of delta L, which is the case of this curve. Hence, as shown here, the R values are chosen when the shift 
of the delta delta reaches the same amount of the threshold voltage difference between the two devices. So in order to get a good value of R, the variance and the average values are taken across all of the G points and, plot, and plotted against the delta delta shift, which is shown here in this curve. Hence, the average value of R is taken at the lowest value of the variance of R in this curve. The final values are shown in this table. Here in the left side, it is the analysis of the VG extraction range of the effective channel length extraction by the shift and ratio method. It is plot the delta delta shift together with the mean value of the effective channel length parameter. Here in the insert, it is shown the coefficient of correlation of the delta delta shift versus the delta VT. So in order to find my extraction boundaries, I need to look first at the low left side of the correlation graph, this VG value, and also both uh, VT long and VT short. So it must be above 0 0.6 volts of VG. On the other side, I need to look and the extracted values are not above the mask value, which here is 180 nanometers. This other graph here on the right side shows the values of the delta L correlated with the delta VT of all devices with a long ratio short possibility combinations of my MOSFET matrix. Hence, uh, it is from a key limit of the method, which is around 40 millivolt of delta VT. That means that below this value, the method doesn't work. Here, only taking the data above the key limit as shown before, the delta L distribution is plotted against three different Ws. It is from here that the mean value of delta L increases linearly for the case when R, it's around 25, which is not the case when R is around 5. Hence, for R around 5, the values of the sigma delta L and sigma delta VT are plotted against the reciprocal 1 over square root of W. Therefore, this is a little bit of the behavior of the delta L variation across different transistor sizes. So conclusions. Conclusions from the curves. We suggest that the distribution data can be modeled by the T student distribution. Secondary and device size effects need to be taken into account for mismatch modeling equation. The conclusions from the parameters is that the current factor parameter beta it's better extracted with the y function for a statistical significance. On the other hand, the threshold voltage parameter is better extracted with the linear extrapolation method in order to also have a statistical significance. Transistors with the same 1 over square root of the error term does not give the same AVT parameter. So the effective channel length, it is not as straightforward to analyze. In the meantime, the shift and ratio method give good, re good results for R around 25 and delta VT above 40 millivolts. So that's it. Thank you very much.